Good morning, everyone, and a blessed Sabbath day to all of us. It is a great blessing that we can once again be gathered virtually to continue to praise our Lord and Savior who has been with us the past week, all throughout the week, and who has uh, guiding us, providing us with all the blessings that we receive and sustaining us with life. So today we're going to start our worship and we will be singing some songs. For our first song, we will be singing When We Walk With The Lord. Or uh, the song title is Trust and Obey. Song. I hope that we are all blessed uh, as we walk with the Lord and as we trust in his guidance and in his leading. For our next song, we will be singing Have Thine and Wailing. Thank you. 
So good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you guys. May I hear your responses? Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, Sabbath. okay. And to those who are watching with us uh, via live, so welcome and happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining with us, guys. So uh, let me read our the sequence of our program this morning. Uh, so our program, our yeah, worship has been started through song service by Sister Gila May Alom. Then after, then yours truly. Then after my part will be the opening song, Joy, See Pure in Heart. Then opening prayer by Sister Saik Paradero. And after the opening prayer, we'll be hearing a message song by Brother, okay, it's a duet from... Sister Grace and Brother Wilbert. Then the testimony to be given by Brother Albert Camino III. Oh, we missed this guy. He is a friend of ours here at IS. And after that is the Garden of Prayers. If you have, for sure you have your prayer request. So don't be hesitant, guys, to send it through chat. So we're going to include it in our prayer garden. Then the meditation, preparation for the second part of our program. Then a special song by the Angel's Melody, followed by the introduction to the speaker by Sister or Mom Efraville Fadolioni. Then we'll be hearing a message from, okay, Brother Jerry Karunding. Then a closing song, The Lord is My Light. Then a closing prayer by our speaker. So that's the sequence, guys, of our program this morning. So we hope that you're going to stay with us until the end of this program. Be sure that you will be blessed by the message and song and yeah, the word of God. So once again, good morning and happy Sabbath. So back to our cars there today, this morning. Okay. To open our um to, to have our opening song or our program, let us sing Rejoice Be Pure in Heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, our Redeemer and our friend, we would like to thank the Lord for all the things that you have done to us, especially this year. Thank you so much for all the blessings. Thank you so much for your protection, for everything, Father. We would like to thank you also for the Sabbath where we could praise you and worship you. Father, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be in our midst as we have our program uh, this morning. We bless all the speakers and man, we bless also the um, internet connection that we have. Um, this program will go smoothly and may it be a blessing to each one of us who are listening to it. Father, we thank you for your love and grace. Forgive us from all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I think Brother Albert is still uh, fixing his technical uh, concern. I hope he'll be able to, to join. I think he's around. Brother, Al Brother Albert, are you around? Oh, yes. Oh, finally, yeah, he's <laughs> here. Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll give you the floor. Brother Albert, we're so excited to hear your testimony. It's been a while, brother. Hi, good morning, lights. Hi, how are you? Happy Sabbath. Oh, we're glad to see you, Brother Albert. Is my you know, audio fine? Are you listening to me? Yes, loud and clear. So, um, it's is it my time already? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, well, um, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. No, I'm forty four. Uh, I'm uh, I belong to the 44th batch, uh, 1,000 missionary. Um, um, concerning my testimony, okay. um, I, I, uh, wait, oh, my wife is calling me outside. Uh, anyways, okay. Um, no, I am from Cebu City. And then um, back then, um, I joined the 1000 missionary because uh, my, my sister's brother-in-law was a senior missionary. And then uh, during the time, it was like, um, I was living like a different different life way back in Cebu. And um, I think for the reason that um, um, the like, the consequences of my like uh, unlawful uh, uh, actions were piling up, so uh, that's why that's one of the main reasons that I I was like uh, my family sent me to one thousand missionary with the hope that I will be renewed and I will be changed. But <clears throat> at the back of my mind during that time, because um, it was like. Um, I mean, it was like um, I was torn. It was like a crossroad, I, like crossroad. Um, <clears throat> it was like um, if I stayed in Cebu, um, it's either because of the unlawful things that I have been doing, I have been participating, and then my friends are also in this um, the same the same uh, things that what I'm doing, even though, like um, yeah. So uh, there were only uh, it left me with two options like if i stay there i'll go in jail or i'll die and then or i need to leave the place i need to leave Cebu city so i took that option so um that's the reason why um i accepted my my family or my sister's offer uh, uh they will send me to one uh, to the campus to join the 1000 missionary movement uh, I, I still remember, like, um, I think it was when we arrived there in the campus, it was Friday, almost sunset now. And then uh, the, uh, the cafeteria people, like, give me, um, yeah, give me, like, a, uh, a special, some um, special food because they were about to close already. So Friday when I arrived there, so the, the, the plan was, um my, my plan at the time was that okay i'll just stay here lay low because my sister said the training will be like one month right only so i didn't prepare i didn't bring any like the, the, the rubber shoes or formal the white dress because i just brought like shirts and pants or my personal belongings just for one month because um at the back of my mind uh, one month is enough time for me to, to gather, uh, to compose myself and to look for um, some common friends in the underworld 
um, in either in Manila or in Pasay, then no, I'll, I'll no, I'll, I'll left. I will run away, and you know, um, continue my um, yeah, and local things that I've been doing for quite some time already. So um, during that time, it was Friday when I arrived there. Felt like, oh, this is a weird place because you know the garden, <laughs> the, the buildings were so the, the the colors were like. But for me, I felt very. I, it felt very weird. I mean, the place itself. So, so you know, uh, um, Saturday came. So and then Sunday. I'm not. I think sa Saturday. Sir Budi was our team. Uh, Sir Budi. Uh, inform us, okay, uh, the formal training will be starting on Monday. So by Sunday, his invite, he was inviting us that if we have some personal stuff or some things to buy, we need to buy, uh, we need to, we could accompany him with goods and uh, SM Das, SM das Ma. So uh, here we could, because it was like the, the formal training will be starting and we cannot go out like immediately to buy some things, some stuff. So since I don't know the place yet, so I, I joined with them. But immediately when we arrived in Esam Dasma, um, I didn't go with the group. I just I, I told I just asked them, okay, where will we meet? Because for me it was like okay, one week I can't go out. There's no smoking because I have all the vices, by the way. So before, uh, before so I drink, uh, I smoke um, at least like one pack of cigarettes per day before I joined the missionary. So during that time, it was Sunday. So while the rest of my batchmates were going to SM or Robinson's, um, you know, there's this road going to, you know, that, that one like going to, I mean, below, uh, going to Tanza, I think, or that one opposite direction to SM. So I went that road and there's those like more stores to buy. So um I bought like cigarettes. I I smoked like three sticks straight and then while going to SM because for me at the time it was like the last day um I mean it was like okay um one parang binge smoking because one week uh, I can't smoke because I will be in the Seventh Day Adventist like missionary campus. So my mindset was so different at that time. So, um, anyways, yeah, you know, um, well, going to meet the group, I was bringing with me like uh, one more stick last time. It was like a fourth stick at that time, and then suddenly I realized, um, sir, good because I, uh, it was like the first time I saw. Um, my batchmate, so I didn't, uh, I couldn't recognize them right away, but only Sir Budi, I, re I, I recognize him like moving, I mean, going near now, so I throw the smoke. So, yeah, so that was like Sunday. And then Monday came, it was like a formal training. So, still, I was, again, no, I mean, I joined the missionary with the, the, the thought that uh, I would just stay lay low from my illegal activities and then maybe after two or three weeks I do uh, the moment that um uh I was thinking uh no the, the timing now uh next Sunday or maybe third or fourth Sunday when we will be um allowed to go out I would you know um run away. Um so those things were like a, um, I know, yun yung nasa concept for the time. So, first week of training, it was so boring. Sorry to say, you know, uh, it, it, it was, I find it so boring. I found it, um, so boring. And, um, cause while I was listening to like the lectures and then the, the, the preachings, the, the short, uh, sh short, um, um, preachings or lectures or testimonies. For me, uh, it was like, it is our, uh, these are the, the, the stories of my mom. My mother keeps telling me about this, the Bible and that. For me, because I didn't, I was an atheist at the time. So 
though I was growing with my family who are like a seven day Adventist, but for me, God, it was not real. And um, he was just like a figure of like um, a character in a book, the Bible. So, so during the first week, it, I, I found um, all the lectures for it. And then, you know, if you remember that like, there were times now we were uh, given opportunities to stand up during chapel period and get my testimony. Uh, I could not, I'm good. I, I couldn't find any connection because, um, ah, yeah, there, there were times like um, some of my um, batchmates, they would stand up and then they would uh, share their life story and why the reasons why they joined the one thousand missionary. And then, um, like one guy, I think it was Jay Evangelista, James Evangelista. He introduced himself and said that he was like the black sheep of his family. And then so for me it was okay, this is interesting, but I could maybe I could connect to this guy. Then later on, while giving his testimony, um I realized, I mean, yeah, while giving his testimony, the reason why he was black sheep because he was like skipping classes and then <laughs> just playing Dota. So I was like, okay, this guy is um if if he if he was like um, if he considered himself like a black sheep because um, he was playing Dota, I mean, how much more I hope how much more for me? Like I mean, I've, I've done many things like you know, going to jail and then do, doing so so many bad things. So I was like, okay, I couldn't connect to that guy. Then there's another guy who has to give his testimony. And for me, they were just like minor, like minor five things, minor, not even a single of them committed a crime. So for me, it, it was so eager. Now, like, like the first two weeks, I was so eager to go out. I don't know what happened. I think during that time, it was, I, I believe, I mean, yeah, maybe the, the Holy Spirit really intervened because I think the first two weeks of our training, I mean, on the second Sunday, supposed to be, we will be going out. But one of my doormates, I think, committed something that Sir Bodhi didn't allow us to go out. So, okay, my plan to run away didn't push through because the second Sunday we were kept inside the campus. But, I mean, practically, you, you could just go out because, you know, the, the first time I went to the campus, the first thing I looked around was CCTV cameras and then, I realized, I noticed that only the admin building was having this, like the, I think you, you have noticed, no? Uh, the city, city, CCTV cameras were only at the admin building in the opposite sides. I think there's one in the gate, but the rest of the places, there's no CCTV camera. And then the gate, the the walls were just so easy to climb around. So I, yeah, I could just easily run away at that time, but maybe the, the, the Holy Spirit was keeping me um, uh, keep telling me that you just stay a little longer. So it went on first, second, two weeks. You know the eagerness of going out. You know you, you, you uh, I started to have cravings like the smoke, the alcohol, and the drugs and everything. Just, but during one day, it was Pastor Galabit's uh, time. And then he gave his testimony about his past. For some reason, I really felt so like offended and insulted because the way when he was giving his testimony, you now he was sharing like what was he, I mean, how bad he was during young uh, during his younger days. Then I don't know, for, for some reason I I I tried to compare myself with what he was been doing. And then the way how maybe the way how was he the way maybe the way how he was delivering his testimony like hit me. Like I felt insulted. And um like really felt insulted insulted at, uh, right after he was giving his like um I mean preaching or uh, lecture. I followed him to his office and then I 
you know, it, we were just the, it was just the, the two of us. Then I like uh, I went out on him, but but in in a nice way, okay, in a nice way. I vented out on him, and they pressure like you were telling this, you were telling that. Then you know, this is what I have been doing in my place, and then you know, like, uh, I felt it so bad. I, 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 um, I was so uh, no, prank at the time. I told I told him that uh, no, you you were saying this, but you know what? You're so little. I mean, this is really sort of things that I've been doing. I've been jail. I've been doing that. But along the conversation, um, I believe it was the Holy Spirit who touched my heart. No? Well, 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 I was so angry. There's this like, um, like pain or like shame and guilt that I felt that um, somehow it 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 uh, more deep. I I cried out. Then I I I cried out loud. Uh, before him, and then from that time, you know the all the stories. I mean, all the lectures, sa campus, sa mga pastor, sa pastor all, um, um, pastor Pakilabat, uh, pastor Shin. It started to ano na? It started to bugam penetrate na sa ang art because before it was just like mga pastor kundirin mo. It just passed from the other side. But my journey at the time, it was not that, no, it, it wasn't that, um, uh, it wasn't that, uh, one moment like turn around. It was a journey. So, um, so I was assigned in Batangas, then in Korea. And during that period, while I was in the one, well, I was in the mission field in Batangas and um, <clears throat> in Korea. You know, God really works in mysterious ways. Um, even while I was in training, um, you know, every Sunday when we received, uh, when we were allowed to use our phones, then I turned on my phone. I keep, uh, I received a lot of messages now. You know, my friends were dealing with drugs, were doing these things and that, like one by one. I mean, not all, but they 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 were killed. Then some of them overdosed. Some of them like were to jail. And then those kind of news that kept on. I mean, I've been kept, I kept on receiving those kind of news while I was in Batangas, and so much more on when I was in Korea. You know when. President Duterte was elected. Um, a lot of my friends really were like executed and and were were, were killed. So when um, I was there in Korea in a mission place, and um, it was really like a, the, the first half of it when our president was elected. Those were the times now um, the news kept on like coming. And, uh, it was really, I mean, I, I, no, um, looking back, um, it was really a, a you know, the, the John 316 verse was, I experienced that like literally, um, um, been praying and I mean, I, mean, I was, I mean, the first uh, half of my missionary their uh, experience in Korea was all like was um no it was all like crying because <laughs> of the gratefulness uh, of what I felt like when I was um how God works in mysterious ways now that um see if if I didn't join if if I didn't give up and if I didn't if I didn't surrender myself. Maybe it was just one of those, one of them. And then, um, even like uh, the devices, one step at a time, it, it eventually wear off. I mean, the, 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 the cravings just literally um, um, wear, um, like first, um, 
you know, in, in, in while well, we were in the training, you know, um, there were some also like my batchmates who were like, who were, who were into the same vices before. And then there was like, I think there were four of us. So, so we, we've been um, sharing stories, testimonies from time to time while in training. And we have this rich, I mean, we have been living the same life before and then we've experienced God's grace. Uh, before we were like, Gabi, so on and on, like, but talaga dati, no, like, uh, we went to rehab, but rehab didn't, um, uh, didn't change us. Or maybe it changed us for a week or two or a month. But then again, we, we go back, we go back to our vices. But the missionary, how God works, um, how the Holy Spirit works and transform our lives. Well, uh, during the, the training, well, during in service, it was like a holistic and it was very different. And it was like um, a life-saving, um, life-saving event for turn, turn events. So, um, sort of the, uh, the, the chant, the verse, um, the text, uh, John 3.16 is so close, very really close in my heart. Not just because now it's so easy to remember. I mean, not just because you could hear it from time to time very often, but it's because that I've experienced it literally. How God, how Jesus Christ would, would save you um, by just you not know, surrendering yourself and uh, leaving it to, to him. So, um, sort of said the, the the transformation, the reformation is the journey, and then um, with God's by God's grace, I mean, I've, I've, I've um, the reason why maybe a brief, yeah, the reason why I reach this far is only because of His um, grace, and I, I know that um, we have, I mean, um, we have um, mga missionaries then. Uh, uh, who, who shared this the same experience that I had uh, before. So I think that's uh, my testimony for today. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath once again. Uh, we are glad that you have joined us in our worship this morning. We have a couple of announcements that we are uh, running. Actually, the core ministries, we have been doing this series of talks for the youth, and we started way back in March. and. May 17, that will be the last of the series. So if you are interested and if you're willing to join and learn new things, this is not just for the youth, but for uh, everybody. So if you could join us on May 17, then please don't hesitate to join because we have another exciting topic and it would still be about music and that will be about secular music. Uh, Last week we had, oh, this week we had the church music. And then we talk about uh, different things and different aspects of music and the proper music in church. But on May 17th, we'll be also dealing with the secular music. So please invite your uh, kids, if you already have kids, or if you have your colleagues with you, then please uh, let them join this. Uh, webinar. I think we still have one more. Uh, we are inviting everyone to write your stories, just like the story that we just heard, your testimony, uh, your personal walk with God, and your journey with God. If you could write it down, please send it to core ministries or core editorial board at gmail.com so that we could include that one in our devotional book. We're planning to have a devotional by next year, 
So we're looking for 365 or 366 stories, missionary stories that could inspire, inspire and uplift those who need it most. I need it. You probably could need it. So please write those stories, inspiring stories that could encourage more people in their walk with God. Maybe they have forgotten their journey with God during those times, and it's time for them to remember the memories of the experiences that they had while working in the field. And actually, we, have, we are also going to have this spiritual emphasis week that will be on August, in August. So please uh, mark your calendars. We're, we're still finalizing the details for the spiritual emphasis week. So please wait for that. We have uh, interesting and inspiring speakers that would uh, help us in our journey with God in that spiritual emphasis week. And I was given a message that the Garden of Prayer will be after the sermon for this uh, worship. So please uh, wait for that and write or send your prayer requests ahead of time so that our technical team could include that one in our prayer request after the sermon. Thank you so much, everyone, and we'll see you again next Sabbath, but please don't forget to join also on May 17th for our Team Talk series. Have a nice Sabbath.
Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. Sabbath rest is a holy rest. So this morning, I am privileged to introduce to your speaker of the hour. Our speaker is Jerry Carondin, 24th batch, and that was in 2004. And his mission field was in Barangay, Napolis, Bago City, Negros Occidental. And he was born in Manado, Indonesia, married to Karen Lee Rosario Carondin, currently residing in Pagadian City, Philippines, with their only one uh, nine week old son or nine months, a graduate of computer science from. Universitas Adventist Indonesia or UNAI in 2004, Bandung, Indonesia, a graduate of Master in Divinity at Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies in 2018. So this morning, we are privileged because the Lord has given us a messenger in which that would uplift our spirit today and let us give him more time. God bless each and every one of us. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Wow, it's so good to be with you guys, uh, to be with fellow missionaries. Uh, I see Brother Jig is here. And Mim Jane, amazing. Uh, yes. 2004, uh, I was... I was still struggling with my English, you know, <laughs> at a time, you know, and then Jane was always there uh, assisting me, even before coming to the Philippines, you know. Uh, thank you so much. I, I cherish those moments in, when I was in the 1000 Mission Movement. In fact, those are the um, uh, pivotal moments in my life that I have to decide that I'm going to be in this ministry for the rest of my life. And... Yeah, let me let me allow me to share my screen. Um, hold on. I think I have to be co-host to the to share my screen. Can uh, the host uh, upgrade me to co-host so I can share my screen? All right. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you so much for having me here, for inviting me into this platform and to be with you uh, and to spend Sabbath with you this, uh, this morning. And I just, I, I, I've been, I, I told me, Mephrael, that uh, let's pray for this meeting that this is going to be a, this is not going to be another meeting, but something will happen that will um, help us to decide for eternity. So let's pray. Even while I'm speaking, let's, let's pray that the Holy Spirit will be in uh, midst of us and um, uh, we will draw lessons and truth that we need to hear uh, for ourselves. Uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful for the opportunity to gather together this morning and to open up your word. Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts, into our minds, and lead us into a clear understanding of this very important truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is this very interesting uh, statement from the book of uh, Gospel Workers, page 148. And it says, the 24th chapter is presented to me again and again as something that is to be brought to the attention of all 
And we are today living in a time when the prediction of this chapter are fulfilling. Let our ministers and teachers explain these prophecies to those whom they instruct. Let them live out of their discourses matters of minor consequences, consequence, and present the truth that will decide the destiny of souls. Let, just give me a few moments. I'm going to transfer this. Uh, all right, that, there you go. So today we're gonna we're gonna study a few verses of the book of Matthew 24, and the title of my message is going to be the beginning of sorrow. This is actually the first part of two sermon series on Matthew 24. Uh, Berjik was with me in previous meeting and when we discussed this uh, this uh, uh, topic. And uh, over time, I've added some materials, some insights, some uh, understanding on, on this uh, particular uh, message. The beginning of sorrow. Let's, let's begin with first one. And we will try to do it uh, systematically and try to gather some, some gems of truth uh, along the way. The Bible says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, the gospel of Mark explicitly, in fact, the only gospel, the only book who explicitly says, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. So Mark specifically mentioned, pointed to the buildings and to the stones. The book of Matthew only says, you know, showing the buildings. And this was probably Tuesday, late Tuesday, after, late Tuesday afternoon. And Jesus had spent the day teaching in the temple courts and had been um, assailed repeatedly by group after group of the Jewish leaders. And that was his last visit to the temple before the, the crucifixion. So imagine Jesus and his disciples coming out from this temple. And according to the history, this temple was built uh, beautifully and with magnificent structures and with white stones. This was the pride and joy of every Jewish heart. Josephus, a Roman Jewish historian, compares the white stone walls of the temple to the, to the beauty of a snow-covered mountain. And he gave this uh, fabulous uh, size of some of its stones. It's, it's about 66 by 7 by 9 feet. It's huge. It's humongous. And some people refer to this temple as Herod's temple because Herod apparently helped to build the temple. So here is Jesus and his disciples walking out of the temple. And the disciples were trying to show Jesus, the temple. Now, why do you think the disciples were trying to show the temple to Jesus? Is it because Jesus never saw the temple? That's impossible. Because they just came out from the temple, right? So why were they trying to show the temple to Jesus? You see, because Jesus does something, uh, uh, says something to the disciples that is very negative about the, the temple. And if we go back, if we go back to the book of Matthew, if you go back to the previous chapter, 30, 38, verse 20, 30, uh, 20, 23, verse 38, he was talking to the, to the religious leaders. And he said, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Now that sounded very negative, isn't it? Very negative. And perhaps this was the reason why the disciples were trying to show the temple to Jesus Christ. Or is it possible? Is it possible that at the very moment they were walking out of the temple, the temple even looked more beautifully? And why is it so? Because according to the history, when the sun went down on the western horizon, the reflection on the sun on the temple makes it look like more. Uh, the, the whole temple made of gold. And because of that, it looks 
uh, it makes the, the building looks more magnificent. Perhaps that was the reason why they were showing Jesus the temple. But you see, at the very moment, Jesus said something even more shocking to the, to the disciples. In verse 2, and Jesus said unto them, See, ye not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here how many stones? One stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So Jesus was specifically saying to them, don't look at this temple. Don't look at this temple. I'm going to tell you something. This building will be destroyed. Not even one stone will be on top of one another. Which means the whole building will be destroyed completely to the ground. And this is a very shocking statement coming out from Jesus Christ. Knowing um, before, before this uh, 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 incident, Jesus says, this temple is my house. My house. My house. And then first, uh, uh, first uh, chapter 23, 38, your house. Your house. Very shocking. Very shocking change. Uh, uh, things is changing uh, along the way. So the Bible said in verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of their coming and of the end of the world? So uh, friends, we need to pay attention to their questions. They ask the questions, when shall these things be? Meaning the destruction of the, of the temple and the destruction of the city. We know from the history that this was already taken place in the year of 70 AD. And I believe when they asked this question, it was in AD 31. So they also asked the question, what shall be the sign of their coming and the end of the world? And this is still in the future. So the disciples asked actually two questions. When would be the temple be destroyed? And when is the, world, the end of the world? In their mind, they were thinking they were only asked one question because they did not know that the destruction of Jerusalem will happen right here. And the end of the world will happen more than 2,000 years later. So they thought these two events are one because they believe the temple of God should last until the end of the world. So when you read Matthew 24, you can definitely see that Jesus is giving them two answers, but it sounds like he's giving them only one answer. Jesus was telling them what happened prior to the destruction of the, of the temple of Jerusalem. And at the same time, he was describing what may happen before the destruction of the whole world. Now, uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, you can open your, 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 your audio. What are the signs of the end of time? What are the signs of the, of the end of time? Anybody? You can open your mic if you want. What are the signs of the end of time? Wars, rumors of wars. Yeah, wars, rumors of wars, yeah. You see, very interesting. When we ask this question to the people, the first answers are usually wars, like what was just mentioned a while ago. War, earthquakes, diseases, pestilence. Now, these are good questions. These are good answers, by the way. And they are all related to something that will happen to us physically. Earthquake is war, uh, is, uh, is uh, physical. War is physical. Disease and hunger, they are all physical suffering. But when Jesus answered their question, the very first answer that Jesus gave was not earthquake. It was not famine. It was not war. What was the first answer that Jesus gave? First four. 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man, what's the word coming? What's the word? Deceive. Deceive. Deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Again, they were asking about the signs of the times. And the very first answer is, do not be deceived. Now, that tells me that in the last days, we are going to see so much deceptions. And when Jesus said, do not be deceived, it was so important that Jesus repeated again and again. How many times? Four times. First four. Take heed that no man deceive you. First five, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Verse 11, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. 24, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So how many times in chapter 24, the word deceive is repeated again and again? How many times? Four. Four times. How many times the word earthquake or war or famines is mentioned in chapter 24? Only one. one. Only one time. Now, I'm not saying that we should not look at the earthquake or famines or pestilence or this pandemic. But what is more important, to prepare for the earthquake or to prepare so that we will not be deceived? Prepare that we are not going to be deceived. That should be more important. So important that Jesus mentioned it four times. You see, deception is not so much physical, right? It is mental. What's happening in your mind? And the very first human, the very first time human being was deceived was in the Garden of Eden, when Eve was deceived by the serpent. And uh, her thinking and her feelings were changing. Before she listened to the word of the, of the serpent, she thought that the tree was dangerous and she felt not comfortable going or approaching the tree. But after being deceived, she think the tree is good and she feels she wants to eat the tree, the, 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 the fruit. Can you see that her mind is changing? So the, the, the deception is to change your mind and to change your thinking. And Jesus said very clearly, do not be deceived. What does it mean? You know, uh, know what you should think. Know how should you feel because your thinking and your feeling should be based upon the word of God. It is not follow your heart. Just follow your heart. Do do it what you will. Know what you should think. Know how you should feel because your thinking and your feeling should be based upon the word of God. And this is the reason why it is important for us to devote ourselves into the, into the study of the Bible. So when we understand the thinking of the Bible and when we surrender our hearts to God, then we will have the mindset of the Bible living in our lives. And this needs to be part of our character, our new creature. And this is the preparation for the last days. Jesus said, do not be deceived. And we are saying, no, I'm a good Seventh-day Adventist. In fact, I'm a missionary. I'm a former, I'm a senior missionary. I'm a good Christian. Well, when you study the Bible carefully, you'll begin to understand that the, the temptation that we are going to face in the last days are going to be really, really challenging. It's going to be very, very difficult, so difficult that the only way we are able to endure those, those temptations is only through Christ alone. How difficult? Let's continue reading uh, Matthew 24, verse 4. Jesus said, don't be deceived. And who's going to bring the deception? Who's going to bring the, the deception to us? Verse 5. For, for many shall come in my name. Saying what? Saying what? I am Christ. And shall deceive how many? 
many. Question, who is going to bring deception? Satan. Who is going, based on this first, who is going to bring deception? Many, this word many, all right? And um, they are saying, I am Christ. This many, this group of many, they are saying, I am Christ. Question, what should we call them, this many, who say, I am Christ? False Christ. False Christ, yeah, we call them false Christ. Now, what's interesting, what's interesting, in verse 11, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. In verse 5, false Christ. But in verse 24, they were together. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show, uh, show great signs and wonders. You see, false Christ will deceive many. False prophet, will, many will be deceived. But when they were together, false Christ and false prophets, they will show great signs and wonders. Meaning they're going to use miracles like in Revelation 16, uh, 16 14. They have, uh, they have greater power to deceive people. And they are trying to deceive who? Continue reading. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. They were trying to deceive the elect. Question, this word elect, do you think there are many or only small people, few, few, few in number? This word elect, are they many or few in numbers? Hello? Many. Are they many people or small in number? This word elect. Small people, small in number, right? Small in number. So look at it again. False Christ deceive many, but not the elect. False prophet deceive many, but not the elect. By the way, let me let me let me clarify this one. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Question, will the elect be deceived or not? This first, the last, the last uh, uh, um, statement. In so much that if it were possible, is it possible to deceive the elect or not? Will the elect be deceived or not? Hello, you can open your mic. No, 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 right? If it were possible, so I mean, that means it's not, it's impossible, right? It's impossible. So, false Christ deceive many, but not the elect. False prophet deceive many, but not the elect. So, perhaps in the mind of Satan, he was thinking the strategy on how to get the elect. Well, false Christ, false prophet, you guys work together, and I will give you more power. And the Bible says, if it were possible, from the inspired writings, Christ Triumphant, page 187, paragraph 1. It says, as the work of God's people moves forward with sanctified, resistless, resistless energy, planting the standard of Christ's righteousness in the church, moved by a power from the throne of God, the great controversy will wax stronger and stronger and will become more and more determined. Mind will be arrayed against mind, plans against plans, principles against heavenly origin, against uh, principle of, principles of heavenly origin against principles of Satan. Truth in its varied phases will in conflict with error in its every varying, increasing forms and which, if it were possible, if possible, will deceive the fairy elect. You see, the, the elect will be, will, be, will be placed at the center of this controversy. Just like uh, Job. Job was placed as the, as the, as the object of the great controversy to see how, how uh, Job will, be, will, will remain faithful to, to God. 
this elect will not be deceived. So question, how to prepare for the last days? Well, don't be deceived. And how not to be deceived? You must be one of those elect. So who are these elect? From the book of Romans 8, verses 33 and 34, the Bible says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, he is also reason who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So notice the elect are those who have been justified and those from whom Christ has uh, Christ intercedes. From the book of Our, Our Higher Calling, page 77. Everyone who will humble himself as a little child, who will receive and obey the word of God with a child's simplicity, will be among the elect of God. Now, before we continue further, are we now convinced that Jesus made a very clear statement that the most important preparation for end time is preparing ourselves so that we will not be deceived? Are we clear on that? You see, some people, they were thinking the best place to escape these calamities, this pandemic, this earthquake is go somewhere. You know, they are thinking of for, for, for a certain place. Or, you know, I have to go country living and then have uh, these piles and piles of rice, stock of food, for the end time. I'm not saying that those are not important, but the most important is to prepare not to be deceived. Psalms 91 is loaded with promises at our disposal as we face these uncertainties of the end time. You see, God can provide our food. God, God can protect us from physical harm, but God cannot and will not think for ourselves. God cannot make decision for ourselves in our behalf. We have to make our own decision to choose to keep our minds in God and to open our hearts in, into his ladies. So Jesus said, do not be deceived. And the deceiver called himself Christ. Let me ask you something. What kind of people who call themselves Christ yeah, false Christ, but we can also say that, that they are really religious people. Now, what kind of religion who call themselves Christ? Buddhism? Hinduism? Or Muslim, probably? What kind of religion, uh, what kind of religious people who call themselves Christ? Christian, obviously, right? Christian. So it's like it's like Jesus is saying that the most dangerous people in the last days are going to be Christian. Did you hear that? The most dangerous person in the last days are going to be Christians. And how many are Christians today? How many Christians today in our group? All of us. You. That means you can you you are a dangerous person. That, that's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. We can be a dangerous person. So Jesus is saying that if you want to know my coming, if you want to know my coming, pay attention to the religious the, uh, religious world, but specifically the Christians in the last days, and obviously. This is not saying that every Christian is evil, but he's basically saying Satan is so smart that he will use Christian to receive to deceive other Christians. And that is more dangerous. And right after this, in verse 6, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The very next topic after the section is war, rumors of war. Question, 
what kind of people that usually talk about war or what kind of people who normally plan to have war with other nations? What kind of people in the nation? Those who are people who are in the in the Senate, in the uh, um, Congress, right? So we can simply say, because war is a political thing, those who are in the politics, war is a political thing, and false Christ is a religious thing. So Jesus is saying, if you want to know my coming, pay attention to the Christian in the last days. And pay attention to the political affairs. What kind of issues? Potential to fight and battle. To make it simple, pay attention to the two powers in the world. Religion power, religious power, I'm sorry, and political power. Religious power and political power. So look around, see what's going on uh, in the religious world and political world. In other words, Jesus is uh, giving us an, an idea. Pay attention to what is happening in the church and in the state. Because they are going to play a very interesting role in the last days. Let's continue. Verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdoms against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. So did you notice a progression here? Before it was just talking about hearing of wars and rumors of wars, but now they're actually fighting against each other. They are, they are in the actual fight. Now I'm going to ask this simple question. When nation is against nation, when one nation is fighting against nation, are they united or are they divided? Divided, obviously. So there is a religious deception. There is a political conflict. And after this, in verse 7, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. We call them uh, natural uh, disasters. So pay attention to the order. Religious deception and then uh, political conflict. And they are divided. And then natural disaster. So, um, very interesting, religious deception, political conflict, they are divided, and a natural disaster. And then after this, the Bible says, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. All these things, what, 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 uh, what, are, what are all these things means? This refers to the religious deception. Political conflict, they are divided. And you combine all these things with natural disasters. You combine all these things. When you see all these things coming to us, is taking place. This is the beginning of sorrow. In the Greek language, ordinance, this word, the beginning of sorrow means the birth pain for a, for a woman uh, to have a child. The beginning of sorrow means the very first pain that she feels. The pain comes gradually. First come, there's a small pain and then it's gone. Pain again and it gets stronger and then it gets, it gets stronger and then peace again. Painful again and then no pain. The, the frequency and the intensity of pain are increasing. And the final pain is so painful and so bad. And then the baby, baby. So Jesus said, when you see all these things, they are just the beginning of sorrow. And I believe when these things happen, we are going to see, we are going to have peace in between. And the frequency and the intensity of the bad things will increase. You think this pandemic is bad enough? No, it's, it's coming. Even more worst. And we are seeing it right now. The Bible says there's going to be famines, pestilence, 
and earthquake, and they are all uh, um, natural disasters. And why these three, by the way? Why these three? You see, famine means hungry. Famine meaning means you're hungry. Disease means you are sick. And earthquake means um, you have no place to live. You're homeless or you are dead. Now look at this language. Famine, no food. Disease, no health. Earthquake, you're homeless. Three basic, uh, three basic needs of every human beings in order to survive. Food, health, and shelter. In the last days, things will become really bad. How bad? No food. On top of that, you're sick. On top of that, you have no place to live because you're homeless, because your house has been destroyed by the, by the, by the earthquake. How do you feel? How do you feel? Distressed, desperate. And when you become, when you become desperate, psychologically speaking, in order for you to survive, you are willing to do anything. And in, in the process of getting, of being, of, of, of uh, surviving, you're, you are willing to believe anything in order to survive. So when human being becomes so desperate, you become weak, you are shaken, you want to survive. And because of this desire, you are willing to even change to what you usually believe so that you can eat, so that you have uh, uh, medicine uh, to, to recover from your illness, so that you have a shelter just for us to feel secure. Again, religious deception, Political conflict, they are divided, and a natural disaster. These are the beginning of sorrow. And in verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The Bible says, they shall deliver you. Question, who are they? Who are these word they refer to? Anybody? Who are these they refer to? Well, from the previous verses, they can be the deceivers or the people that are deceived. So it is very possible that religious people in connection with political people, church and state are working together to arrest you, to afflict you, and to kill you. But what's more, but what's more interesting, the Bible says that uh, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You shall be what? You shall be what again? Anybody? Hated. You shall be hated. By how many nations? All. All nations. So all nations hating God's people. Question. When all nation hating God's people, in the act of hating, are they united or divided? United. They are united. You see, first seven... Nations shall rise against nation. First nine, all nations. It was divided, but now they are united. What's going on? Why there is a change? Did you notice that? What happened in between? What caused them to be united? You see, according to verse 9, it looks like they get to be united to hate God's people. But I'm pretty sure that that is not the first reason they got united. What can cause nation that are usually in conflict come together as one nation? And is it even possible? Yes, look at this. Two nations, they're fighting against each other. Well, let's say... Uh, Russia and Ukraine. 
they are fighting against each other. And there's, there's this big earthquake coming. Big earthquake. And both nations are now suffering. Will they continue to, to, to fight against each other, each other? Will they continue to fight against each other? No. They will not, they will not fight against each, each other because they are all suffering. They are all suffering. It changed their thinking. It changed their mind. So question, is it possible? Is it possible that disaster can bring two nations together? Very possible. In the past 20 years, we've been facing global warming, global terrorism, global financial crisis, global natural disasters, this pandemic. And we are seeing nations after nations coming together helping each other, giving aid to one another. And the Bible says there's going to be unity in the last days. It looks like it's a good thing to have a unity, but that's dangerous. We only study nine verses. I told you this is the first part of, the, of a series of uh, two sermons. But we can see the sequence of the things that are, that are happening, happening in the world. In fact, this is the only place in the Bible, Matthew 24, where the major end time events appear in strict chronological order. And, 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 and then, and then, and, and, and all throughout the, all throughout the entire chapter 24. Very strict chronological, chronological order. And for us to understand what's happening in between, the, the, um, uh, the commentary of Matthew 24 is actually the book of the great controversy. Matthew 24 begins with the destruction of Jerusalem. The great controversy begins with the, the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, and it ends with second coming. The same thing with... Um, the controversy and with second coming and then all the way to the new Jerusalem. So we have religious deception, political conflict, natural disaster. And then the next thing is the beginning of sorrow. And then all nations come together. Looking at this, it's time for us to look around us. What's happening in this world? This pandemic People are now we're talking these rumors of war, World War the Third. Rumors of war. What should we do? Run to the mountain, have country living, and stock of bring all rices that you can get. By the way, I'm not saying country living is bad. We have to live in the country. We have, that's, that's part of character building. I am up for country living. But this country living has been marred by people who, who, who uh, fear of the end time. They live in the country and they seclude themselves out of touch with the people that we need to reach, that we need to call, come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. We need to go back to the teaching of the Bible. We need to, we need to root ourselves in the Bible. Spend more time reading it. Spend more time with Jesus. And look the future in anticipation for Christ's return. We work in anticipation for Christ's return. I'm going to work as a teacher in anticipation of, for secondary, of, of Christ's return. I'm going to work as an as a, as a accountant or as a doctor in anticipation of Christ's second return. So please consider these things. And Jesus is urging and pleading with us, with you. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Things will get worse and worse and worse. And But Jesus says, Fear not. Fear not. I will be with you. You're going to be in prison? That's okay. I'm going to be with you. You will get sick? That's okay. I'm going to be with you. You're going to be afflicted? 
That's fine. I'm going to be with you. Even unto the end of the world. The main purpose of May 24, the main purpose of May 24 is not to convince secular people that Jesus is coming soon. It's not. The main, the central purpose is to keep God's own people faithful in the midst of Satan and uh, Satan's end time deception and persecution. It is not. It is not to convince uh, secular people because of this transpiring event in the political, economic, social, and religious world. Jesus told his followers that Satan is going to exert all his efforts to deceive, to discourage, to persecute, and kill God's people with the intent of leading God's people to lose their faith. The purpose of this chapter is to encourage the faithful one. Hang on. Hang on. I'm coming. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. How many of you this morning wanted to, to pray? Lord, yeah, so much fear is in my heart. So much fear in my mind. Looking at this pandemic, you can, uh, what's going to happen after this election, you know? And these rumors of war, of uh, third world war, Lord, I, I fear. I discourage. I'm afraid that of all these bad things that are happening in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm incapable preparing myself for the end time. I think that's the, that's the, that this is the reason why we need Jesus all the more. How many of you want to, to make a decision tonight? I mean, this morning. Lord, please be with me. Help me not to be deceived. Can you raise your hands digitally? All right, let's pray. Loving Father in heaven, it is just uh, beautiful and sweet things to, uh, to just uh, address you, Father. This God of the universe, this creator of all this cosmos, and yet you allow us to call you Father. Such a dear name to address you, Father. And you allow us to call ourselves daughters, sons, and daughters. We want to thank you for giving us this assurance of your presence as we face these uh, troubles, these uh, uncertainties of the end times. As we see before our eyes this uh, signs of the times uh, unfolding, we want to pray, Father. Please be with us. Draw very close to us. We, you have promised that when we draw closer to you, we'll be drawing closer to us too. So please, never leave us alone. Thank you for the word of God that give us maps, that give us GPS, that grant us that we will not be deceived, that we will not go astray. And we have decided, we have committed ourselves to the word of God to live a life from this time onwards that will only, that will, that will have only one purpose and that is to bring glory to your name. Hide us, Father. Hide us behind the cross, behind your cross. Help make us a nail where, where the picture of Christ will be hanged, that people will see Jesus in our lives. Such a humble experience to carry the name of Christ, Christ in our name. Just to be called ourselves Christian. Please, Father, please be with us. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the only name where we can call and we will be saved. Amen. 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 Okay, praise God for the powerful message that you have given to us, Sir Jerry. So now we're going to proceed to our kind of prayer. But before we're going to collect your prayer request, I would like to request you, Sir Jerry, to lead for our garden of prayer later after yeah, we have been collecting the prayer request. So 
At this time, guys, if you have prayer requests, please send your prayer requests through chat. Okay, so we have a list here, aside from your personal prayer request, guys. Okay, so we have, let's pray for our online ministries worldwide. The second one is COVID, those who are COVID infected patients and frontliners. And the personal relationship, our personal relationship with the Lord, this is very important. With the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, then the ongoing talk series of the core ministries is to continue guys to support this program then the ukraine and russia conflict let us pray for sister Zorin in her health issues please pray for the for the grace is treeless family as they recover from covid and also pray for brother will Wilbert Silibio to recover soon from covid Yes, he's positive. And for pray for Julianne's daughters, Jani and Jaazi, to get well from cheap packs. So there's one send a prayer request here from Sister Salim. Please pray for the upcoming general elections next Tuesday in America, as well as the one that just passed this week in. Filipinas. Okay. So, any prayer requests? Anyone? Okay. So, none so far. So, we'd like to request Sir Jerry to speak for our cardinal prayer. All right. Let us pray. Mighty God everlasting Father, we want to call your name again one more time. Uh, in this meeting, we want to thank you so much for bringing us together in this uh, uh, virtual meeting from all over the world uh, for one purpose to study your word and to uh, uh, see ways on how we can uplift your name uh, in our lives. Uh, we want to humble ourselves before the throne of God, knowing that you know everything you hold our lives yeah. and you have extended our, the, our lives again and again so that we, we may have opportunities to, uh, to accept Christ one more time and to share the love of God, the love of God to anyone and to prepare more people for your soon return. And yet we have a prayer request, Father. We have, we have this desire of our hearts that you want to... Um, bring to you petition in our hearts that you want to bring to your father we we are aware of the ongoing conflict between russia and ukraine and many are affected in fact i met a, a family in ukraine just a few days ago from ukraine they are displaced they have family back home we we might know somebody from ukraine as well so we want to bring them father into your hands into your um mighty uh, hands father that you will be with them you will you will uh, spare them from any any uh, untoward uh, uh, situation many have died people are being displaced going out from the country and yet many also are staying behind to fight so we want to pray father may the spirit of peace will continue to move to these people in not, only in, in not only in Ukraine, but also in the people in Russia. We have faith that as what the Bible says and the inspired writing says that um, you hold the kings of the world. You bring them up in, and you bring them down. So we want to put our trust and you want to have our faith in the Lord that God is not blind looking at these things. We want to pray for this... Uh, ongoing counting of this uh, uh, votes uh, uh, election in the Philippines. We want to pray that you will continue to, uh, to watch over us to have a peaceful uh, election process and that the leader who will be elected will be chosen by the nation, by the people. We'll be the kind of leader that will uh, allow God's people to, to worship you more, to spread the gospel even more rapidly to give us this window of time before the close of this probation to bring the gospel to all over the world. So we want to pray also for the conflict in the families, 
conflict internally, individually that we have, that we uh, uh, are praying to you directly. Please, Father, be with us. Hear our prayers. Hear our petition. Help us to wait in the Lord. Help us to have Jesus in our hearts. So be with us, the rest of the Sabbath hour. Help us to keep and maintain the sanctity and the holiness of the Sabbath. Prepare us for your soon return. Help us to be faithful until you return on a second time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For our closing song, let us sing, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light, and why should I fear? By day and by night, His presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin. This blessed persuasion the Spirit brings me. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, though clouds may arise, but stronger than sight looks up to the skies. Where Jesus forever in glory doth reign, then how can I ever in darkness remain? The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, the Lord is my strength. I know in His might I'll conquer at length. My weakness in mercy covers in power, and walking by faith, He upholds me sure. The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy, and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my all and in all. There is in His sight no darkness at all. He is my Redeemer, my Savior and King. With saints and with angels, His praises I sing. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, indeed, you are our song, our, our joy, and our light. And we want to thank you for being the way you are in our lives. We want to ask one more time, Father, send us your Holy Spirit. Fill every chamber of our heart with your Holy Spirit. Take away all the worldliness in our lives, that we may be worthy to be called the temple of God the living temple of God. Bless our worship today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so thank you so much, guys, to all of our participants, especially to our speaker. So hope you're going to join with us again next Sabbath. And enjoy the rest of the Sabbath, guys. Thank you, Elsie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Happy Sabbath.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> it's been like several decades. Yeah. <laughs> You've improved a lot, and I'm, I'm so I really happy. praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. You're a part of the praise journey, God. MJ. <laughs> praise God. Bye, everyone. God bless all. Bye, everyone. God bless. Thank yes, you, God bless you, everyone. Bye. Yeah. God bless you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Salem, how do I get to communicate with you?